So there is something funky going on. I think I need to examine this script. Really going to be uh, pushing the heat issues. And you know what? Let's build this moon landing one. All right, Jebediah. I hope you said goodbye to everybody. You're going to be gone for a little while. Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. You know, why don't we get started by taking a look at what we got cooking here in the vehicle assembly building and the space plane hangar. So we got the Onion 2. The Onion 2 says need testing. Both my pilots are, uh, do I have that indicated here somewhere? There we are. Uh, Jeb's got three days. Val's got, oh, a week. She's just got back from, uh, doing that seaplane mission. So I gotta wait for some pilots and I can test my onion or fly it even <laughs> noticing that we got an ugly test vehicle coming up again I'm trying to phase out the testing parts contract I'm hoping this is going to be one of the last one and that VTOL that mysteriously crashed we have that in the space plan uh, this seemed to be a software issue I kinda want to do investigate that in the space plane hangar we have the Weasley M1 which is just beginning to be built it's gonna take nine days I think I'm gonna let that uh, let that cook for a while that will be a nice supersonic jet I'm also interested to see how how far what kind of range does that thing have have the seaplane you saw last episode wouldn't mind getting in there did a little bit of modifying to it so I could put some uh, additional passengers in it but I wouldn't mind doing some more modifying to it again Needs a pilot so I can do some testing. Why don't we get... How am I doing for contracts? I should definitely check that out. Do I have... Seven. I do. Okay, so what I want to do... Is... I want to get into here. I actually want to take a look at this VTOL. See if we can figure out... What the dealio is with it. This has been such a simple little craft. You know, eventually what I do want to build once I'm really comfortable with flying these types of things is one with jet engines but one that's a little more substantial can carry passengers that I can use for nearby rescues and science uh, deployment but uh, I really do want to figure out why this one when I used its hover script did not work right so you know what why don't we just simulate we don't even need do I have anybody have Bill. We don't need anybody because it has a probe body. So we're just going to simulate it as... You know what? Maybe it's better to simulate it with a Kerbal in there just for the weight. And yeah. Let's give this a go. I don't want to spend a lot of time debugging in here. If this turns out to be other than a simple fix. Uh, hover. Hover. AG. Alright. If this turns out to be something complicated, I'm going to go back into sandbox mode and try and figure out what is oh. Now, is this the same? No, this looks like this looks like my program that you that I was playing with in sandbox mode on sandbox Saturday. And it seemed to work fine. So, let's see what we have here. So, we're going to run hover AG. Boom. Oh, wait. Tried to push an infinity. Oh, I, you know what? I need to put a little bit of code here to stop that from happening. That's the, uh, the, uh, engines not being fired. And down here, it, it's dividing by a fail available thrust in this calculation to determine what the thrust setting should be. And the available thrust right there was zero. A simple if statement I think just testing whether the thrust is zero or the available thrust is zero I think would prevent it from trying to execute that and prevent that kind of silly error okay so everything seems nominal right now let's get ourselves on bill and nine should give us hover mode and that should not be any upness to it and it's not Okay, and then if I press 6, we should be start getting some uptitude. 9 again. Let's pull that program vector 
back to the center of the nav ball to try and keep ourselves going straight up. We are accelerating upwards. This is what shouldn't be happening. That is what is strange, so five, five, five. We should absolutely be decelerating right now. It really seems to be calculating too much thrust. So there is something funky going on. I think I need to examine this script. I will have to examine this later. Right now, um, I'm not going to waste simulation time on something like this. Okay, I got one more thing I want to do in the vehicle assembly building. What I've been noticing, let's get an Octo here, an Octo Pro core here to get us started is last episode I've been so concentrating on building things I've been ignoring the fact that I'm starting to unlock new engines we have the radial twitch engine here uh, definitely I believe designed as more of a radial vacuum engine we have ants got those we have the pug engine looks like a mini version of the poodle engine I'm assuming yeah, definitely a vacuum engine. We have here the Valiant engine. This is uh, a little bit bigger. I've been using, you've been seeing me using the torch a lot lately. So you can see the Valiant is a 1.25 or maybe a 1.6. Mm, I'm not entirely sure. Is it? No, it looks like a 1.25 meter part. Um, but... What does it do for us here? Uh, 100 kilonewtons of thrust compared to just the 55 from the back, so or from the um, torch. So what I really want to do is see if I can build not quite the ISP of the torch though, uh, a better booster that can lift heavier payloads. Uh, right now, what is the heaviest payload I can lift here? If I get into my boosters. My heaviest booster is the Hammer R4. There it is, and it can carry 1.4 tons. I'd like to get over that. And then I can start getting into building things, uh, especially Kerbals. Getting Kerbals, higher orbits, you know, going to the moon, things like that. Minus, obviously. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can do something with this Valiant engine. Do I have a decent amount of mass that I'm lifting here. We are lifting just 1,600 tons. Not even that, or 1,600. 1. 1,600 kilograms, oh my gosh, 1,600 tons in my dreams. Not even that really, 1.576 uh, tons. And that's when I'm still needing to add fins and parachutes and all that kind of j -j jab. It's Valiant. It's really clearly an upper stage rocket. What I'm missing are the lower stage. I got vacuum rockets that will work fairly well and pretty powerful ones. What I'm really missing is the lower stage rockets. This being my most powerful lower stage rocket. No, 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 this is not working. Let's just check. Do I have access to fuel lines? I have not unlocked them yet. If I get into my marketplace, fuel line tech won't let me until I finish off a contract. <laughs> so I got to finish off a contract to grab this even though it gets satisfied right away. Okay, that's fair enough. But fuel line tech will give me, well, fuel lines that might maybe solve this in the meantime I got enough stuff going on for contracts want to build something for science the site experiment okay I definitely want so I need to circularize it it's done doing its low science and it's in his busyness collecting upper upper science but part of the orbits in low orbit from last episode so I gotta circularize that so that's something to take a look at in a bit the mite experiment is having trouble collecting over it's catching the ice cap slowly but it might not be a bad idea to put something into 
a uh, low another thing in a polar orbit collecting the might experiment goo observations that's what I wanted to look at flying at Kerbin Kerbin surface and from Kerbin's ocean so I don't have a high altitude goo so there's something to think about too all right uh, let's think about then the light experiment oh no the light the light is done the mite experiment that's what we're gonna do so I banged together the octo 5 mite experiment and you'll be seeing this thing fly next episode uh, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about it it's a pretty mundane craft so there is a part type that I haven't used in a while so why don't we focus on that you know what I could do too. I have not used smart parts in a long time, so this is a perfect example of what you can use a smart part for. Um, we can do things like there. Let's see what we got here. That's communications. A pro altimeter action. Okay, so we'll add this guy on here. I'm gonna sneak you right in. Somewhere. Oh, I would be love to be able to just get you on top of something. I guess that's all right. <laughs> and what I can do is you can set this guy so that let's say we get to 60 kilometers. Whoops. Can I change the scale on this? Because that's 75. Oh, I can do it this way. Oh, I see what happens. Okay, so we'll get to 50, and then you can do this. There we go. Set this to 60 kilometers. We want to trigger... Oh, on ascent. Nice. So only on the way up. And we want to trigger action group 1. And with action group 1... Let's get back to here. I'm going to toggle the antenna, but we're also going to deploy the, I'm assuming deploy means fire the fairing. We'll see what happens. First, Octo 5 might experiment. Okay, let's close this. Exit out of here. All right, we got something else being built. It's high time we flew something. So after a very quick visit, with the Octo-4, which we saw last episode. It is now, as we saw, done with its low space science collecting. So I just need to push up its periapsis so that it'll be in high space all the way around in its orbit. And then we'll just leave it to its own devices to continue to collect science for us. All right, let's launch something. I really got to keep an eye on my altitude and my speed and knock this over quite a bit so I don't want to get up we're gonna to have to be going pretty fast at a pretty low altitude for this one because our first contract is get up to a speed of between 1290 and 1690 meters per second while our altitude is between 20 and 23 kilometers I mean that's pretty fast for a relatively low altitude and then we got our second contract which is to stage the launch escape system once we get to 80 kilometers which clearly we would do after that because by the time I get around 20 kilometers I want to be horizontal I keep calling these ugly test vehicles but to be honest this thing's not too ugly I, I always like the look Gate towers on the top. They always look. They always add to the coolness of a rocket putting on an escape tower. All right, starting to level off. Keep an eye on my apple apses too. Because 
by the time I'm at 20, I want to be pretty much horizontal. So this thing's really going to be... <laughs> really going to be... Uh, pushing the heat issues. Okay, I'm in the right speed range. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's green. Pitch up. Let's get up that apoapsis. Get up that apoapsis. I was a little slow on the staging. I didn't notice that my uh, my uh, one stage had run out in all of the heating effects that's going on here. Come on, come on, apoapsis, up, 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 up. Yeah, 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 you got it. Cut the engine. Just got to remember to stage at the appropriate altitude. And green and stage. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> All right, this thing's going to die. We can go back to the space center. That's two contracts in one vessel. Like when that happens. All right, um, let's get into mission control here. First thing I want to get back into are the prototypes. And yes, fuel line tech, let's scoop that up. Nice, okay. So now I got fuel line still. Need to pick up two more contracts. Let's avoid the part testing. Holy jeez, I don't have really much, do I? Oh, does that mean I got to get back into part testing? It does mean I got to get back into part testing. I got to get back into part testing. I don't want to do part testing. Test the small launch escape system in flight over Kerbin. That's a three star. Small launch escape system. Sure. Okay, I'm going to grab that one. And let's grab something that might be able to go with it. So we might be able to bang them off with the same vessel again. Here's half the reason why I wanted to show you this. Where? I think they're under here. There it is. The small launch escape system. This is my first... <laughs> my first go at my own part. Well, okay, we really, really have to qualify what I mean by that. Um, I took the... It always bugged me that there isn't a 0.625 meter version of the escape tower, so this is simply the 1.25 meter version of the escape tower that you just saw in that previous test, and I just simply scaled it. I looked up how do you scale these parts. It really isn't that complicated. I scaled it down, so now I have a 0.625 meter escape tower. Not formally unlocked yet, but hopefully soon. Plenty of delta V, plenty of thrust. All right, we're gonna, should I test this thing? Oh, screw it, I don't wanna test it. I'm not gonna test it, it's gonna be fine. We're just gonna save it. We're gonna add this to the plans. And then the VAB, we're gonna do another ugly test vehicle right there. Now, it was mentioned in the comments. If you make, yeah, you can create missions. This is not a bad idea. Okay, let's see here. We have this add to mission list. So create a new mission. This is ugly test vehicle. This is really not a dumb idea at all. I've just never done it. So ugly test vehicle and then if I go to where's this one here this one say add to mission list ugly test vehicle and now if I go to view no, no that's not the right one if I go to ugly test vehicle and unhide is that what I need to do there it is those are the two contracts for the ugly test vehicle I should really just 
do this regularly, shouldn't I? <laughs> There's a feature that's been in... Um... So, go back to all contracts. Keep doing that. There we go. Um, so, like, what else do we have in the building queue right now? Close this. Let's look at the build list. We have VTOL 1 that does have a contract associated with it. So let's let's do that. So mission list. So now if I go to here, I can click on the Orion 2 and there's the mission associated with it. I can, oh, and you can probably, nope. I can go to the VTOL, that's the mission associated with it. And I can go to um, ugly test vehicle. That one's waiting on a seaplane. Moon landing. I can build. Yeah. Moon landing. Is, I want to get uh, access. Well. I could do a moon landing without action. I should really think about that. Okay. No. Um, but. Right now I think we're good. VTOL's done. You know what? Let's build this moon landing one. So let's build something that can do the entire... Yeah, I think I'm going to build something that can do the entire transit and landing. And you can comfortably do that with something. If I can build something that can do about... As long as I can keep this underweight, that's going to actually be the biggest issue. I want to keep the mass under about 1.4 tons. With less mass... And these spiders added together, I get this pug engine. And that gives me more fuel. And it kind of does look nicer. Oh, in science, of course. We will go with... We have telemetry reports, which can do stuff. Land it is biome specific, so that's probably not a bad idea. So, telemetry reports what it's going to be. What other science do we got here? That can't be transmitted, so a thermometer, right? That can be, that's biome specific. Geiger counter biome specific landed. And the press map barometer, but it, it has to be in an atmosphere. That's something Kerbalism changed. <laughs> Which, honestly, let's face it, it was kind of silly all those times you could take pressure samples in the vacuum of space. And we will cue these experiments so they will do their thing when they're supposed to do their thing. Alright, uh, still well over two kilometers per second at Delta V and I think I might be closing in on a, a finished product. We are at 1.2 tons I should be able to lift this into space and this has more than enough Delta V to do the injection the the uh, capture around the moon a landing and maybe maybe even a hop dare I hope for it all that's left is to put this atop the appropriate booster but I'll leave that as a reveal for next episode when this thing flies Right now, well, we have two more missions we have to perform to finish off this episode. And Jeb is ready. Okay, so we're going to do the Vito 1, and then we're going to, well... Yes, we are going to do the Vito 1, because that will require a minimal amount of launch pad reconditioning. There is an obvious addition here of a mallet SRB, my smallest SRB, and the job of this is to simply get it up to its required 500 meter altitude, at which point it will detach. There's a buried separatron that will push it sideways out of our way, and then we'll have full fuel tanks on which to descend, so hopefully running out of fuel won't be an issue this time around. But what I really want to show you first off, though, is my completed hover script, and talk a little bit about what was wrong with it before. Now, if you've been watching the last couple of Sandbox Saturdays, actually, you've already seen a lot of this. Though I have cleaned it up quite a bit. Once I had it, so I was pretty happy with it, I went through and just started doing some changes. So I, I functionized it, so we have a main function here. Main function sets the thrust, and then sets a variety of triggers, which are the action groups, 
and then it prints out a UI to the user to uh, aid in con in what to do with said action group. So, um, first of all, let's setting the thrust. The thing that I have changed since the were all of these locks. Um, now they're all locks. Before only this one was a lock and these were all sets, but this is what ended up happening and why it failed last episode. If this is a set, it sets the force of gravity, so it calculates the force of gravity on this particular vessel. Um, and it calculates it, so based on the vessel's mass and its altitude and radius from the center of curve, and that's not a problem. But the problem is it's only going to set it once, and as this thing loses fuel, it's losing mass, so its force of gravity is going down, but when it's calculating the necessary thrust to uh, exactly balance off the force of gravity, that thrust isn't being adjusted for the fact that this vessel is now going to weigh less and so that's why as it loses fuel it continues to accelerate upwards uh, changing that simply to a lock means that the force of gravity is now locked to this calculation so as the mass of the vessel changes this will continually to get upgraded and when we're calculating what the thrust setting will be this number is continually being updated so it's adapting um, to it. I didn't notice this during Sandbox Saturday because I was doing this with jet engines and jet engines consume fuel at such a low rate and for the amount of time I was doing the testing the amount of mass it was losing was not enough for me to notice the difference but with this rocket engine it certainly was. Anyway, um, that was the main thing that was going wrong. Once I recognized that, that was a pretty easy fix. Down here we're setting the trigger so using on statements and the various triggers to increase the thrust, decrease the thrust, uh, set the thrust ratio to 1 is a 9 and then pressing 10 or 0 uh, kills the engines and then down at the very very bottom is just my user AI which prints out to the user what controls do what and also keeps track of what the thrust to weight rate. I used to have this called thrust setting but really thrust setting is the thrust to weight ratio of the vehicle it continually tells the user what the thrust to weight ratio currently is and prints out just messages if you're in hover mode and or if you've killed the throttle just in case you're not paying too much attention and that's it that's the whole thing so we'll exit this I'm going to run hover oh I should actually show one last thing I did can I go back to it no I can't edit hover AG one common problem you were seeing when I was doing all my testing, uh, it's way up high, is that if I didn't have the engines, okay, I'm going to need to make this window bigger because it's getting annoying. If I didn't have my engines engaged, um, then the available thrust right here for the calculation is zero, and you can see I'm dividing by that. So if I have yet to engage the engines, then this calculates a zero and this whole thing, the whole program crashes because I'm dividing by zero. That was easy to fix. So I put just a wait statement in here. It says don't do any of this stuff until the available thrust is, a, is greater than zero. And that means that if I don't stage the rocket before I run the program, uh, it's not going to crash, it's just going to wait for me to engage the engine. So run hover AG, not going to run it yet because we're going to go on our, there, give myself a little bit more room on the terminal. SAS on, don't need to worry about the throttle because the hover program is going to do that. And we're just going to go straight up. So you ready Bill? Here we go. Alright, up, 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 up. And once we're out of fuel, I'm going to stage that rocket. Stage. Stage again. Stage. There we go. Run hover. And uh, da -da -da. nine. 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 Six, 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 six. <laughs> hurry up, hurry up. Oh, I wasn't quick enough in engaging those engines. 
What the hell exploded there? There was a parachute! There was a parachute on that booster! Okay, did that... Did I satisfy the contract? Because I have no idea if I did or I didn't. <laughs> it didn't have the contract queued up. Uh, let's see here. Missions. This was the mission for the VTOL. Why didn't this count? <laughs> I don't think I even... Oh, I did. I broke some engines. That's probably why I did. Oh, my God. Alright, I gotta try that again. This doesn't take long to build, so we'll reset, and we'll get back to this a little later in the episode. But in the meantime, Jeb is just chomping at the bit to get into space. Jeb is doing fine. We're going to now do this. We're going to select the mission. So this is the Onion 2. And he has to be up for 72 hours or 12 days. All right, Jebediah, I hope you said goodbye to everybody. You're going to be gone for a little while. So we have here the Onion 2, the improvement over the Onion 1 you saw a couple of episodes ago. Being lifted up by the Hammer R4 booster. My biggest booster to date, but oh my gosh, I really do want to get some bigger ones. This might be the first vessel I have launched. Oh, those those came off nice. Should put parachutes on them. Nah, maybe not. They're not really worth that much. But this is the first vessel. This is what I was saying. This is the first vessel I have launched that is over 18 tons. So it does require the upgraded launch pad. Putting on the four radial hammer SRBs is what puts it over the top. nice <laughs> all right back down to the single hammer yeah I'm really been playing with trying to build a heavier booster and really what's the limitation I'm getting some really fine orbital engines but the hammer is still my heaviest engine as far as uh, thrust at sea level and that's really what's holding me back I need a nice heavy uh, a nice heavy engine for getting off the pad. Alright, on to the torch engine. And there we go, we have reached our desired Apple apps. Let's time warp a bit. So we get to the program to end. Okay, attitude lock disengaged, program ended, so we're closing that. Jeb is now on his own. A little higher here. All right, it's high enough. Let's pop the fairing. Nicey nice. Get ourselves into space. We're tumbling a little bit, but that's not a big deal. We'll get control of this once we're in space. All right. SAS on. War oh, Jeb, of course, can lock to prograde now. Good old Jebediah. Still plenty of fuel left in the vehicle. Spending too much time tootling about, aren't I? There we go. Come on. On there. There we are. Alright. Let's circularize. Plenty of fuel. Let's just lock that in. Control this one. 
trust. So reducing thrust and keeping that time to apoapsis nearby. And that way you won't be raising your apoapsis too much. as you close in on your desired periapsis. And that's being particular. Okay, we've gone green on our contract now that we've got an orbit and it says here we got 12 days to go. All right, so we're going to put you on the normal vector. Well, let's put you on this normal. There we are, and hopefully that will get us. I don't know why I hate it when it's pointing from the, on this upside down on the screen. Uh, we'll sort of point this towards the sun. I only put the solar panels on the one side um, because I wanted to keep the door for the goo clear. Now, speaking of goo, I didn't have this on automatic because um, because uh, I didn't, there's, I got an upper atmosphere goo that I can still collect, but what I want to do is actually just do this right now. So it is now collecting goo. That's going to take about 10 minutes. So we'll let it do that. I do like this restock mod changing the look of the goo. And that's an inline goo. Um, I, honestly, I think that's restock plus now that I mention it. These are my separatrons in case the, uh, Torch engine fails, the Sepatrons can still deorbit the craft if need be. Okay, we can open up our little service bay doors here, and there should be an antenna. All oh, the antenna didn't deploy, so we'll extend the antenna. There we go. Thought I had that on the same action group. Clearly, I didn't. So, Jeb should be okay. Let's check on Jeb's status here. So, onion and info okay so Jeb has 19 days of food 16 days of water 16 days of oxygen two years worth of nitrogen the nitrogen is there for doing EVA so that you can repressurize the capsule um, but we can't do EVAs because I've yet to update the astronaut complex. My electricity, okay, I should really be paying. I should really spin this around now and absorb, you know, as this is all being collected. Oh, and the other thing I should start up, crew reports. Start up crew reports because that's a big reason why Jeb is doing it. So we are currently over the water, I would assume, and that means that... Um, it's waiting, so that means we. Uh, when Val was up before, was it? Oh my god, who was it that took the onion up first? Was it Val or was it Jeb? I think it was Val, wasn't it? I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, she must have gotten the, the all the water crew reports, which is obviously the easiest one. But as we come over shores, this should tag on here. And hopefully as Jeb goes about, he will be collecting most of the crew reports. I'm just realizing now the one biome he's going to miss is the Badlands. And if you put, there it goes, if you put him into a bit of an inclined orbit, he could have gotten the Badlands as well. That was uh, kind of poor thinking on my part. So we're going to wait until we've collected the samples. The sample is in the goo container but the goo container is not coming back with us I hope I didn't just botch this because obviously it's detached with the service module the only thing coming back is the capsule and the parachute on top but what I'm wondering I'm, I thought the capsule had a storage spot but now I'm worried about it so we're gonna keep going until the crew report is done or the goo sample is done and it's by the way, got I got I think here it's not going to be a big deal because I got Delta V. But if you're collecting a lot of stuff, notice how the mass is going up. 
right? We're actually collecting something. I have no idea what. <laughs> In the vacuum of space, I have no idea what we're collecting. But uh, we, we are gaining mass here, so not enough to really be a problem with this vessel and the fact that we're just in a low orbit, but something to think about. How is the goo doing in terms of percentage goes? Where's my goo? Goo is down here. Oh, goo is done. Goo is done. Okay, let's stop. Time warp. The goo has done its gooey thing. And here's the question. Where is that sample now stored? Is the sample in the goo? Or is the sample in the capsule? Because if the sample is in the goo, I am in trouble. Now, one of the things that Kerbalism... Where can I transfer the crew to? <laughs> Never mind. That was dumb. Um, one of the things that Kerbalism says it doesn't do is there's no longer needs for EVAs to get science. So I'm just... Uh, I see nothing about where that sample is. So if I botch this, I botch this. Goo sample is done. I don't know, when I click on, when I hold it on here, it sure looks like the goo sample is, is, <laughs> that's what's, it's the mystery goo that's being highlighted. I think this mission may require a redesign, but it is a... I don't think there's any way to get the goo out. I'm really thinking the goo is in here, the sample is in there, and I have no way of getting it out, and it's not going to return. Okie dokie. Well, we'll be back. <laughs> How much science is that? 5.4 science. I guess it's not... A huge deal just sort of disappointing but we'll go with the contract I think the biggest thing about this that's gonna really is that I don't have Jeb for now 12 days as he's orbiting around and we'll definitely have to keep an eye on him but in the meantime let's take another crack at that crude Kerbin landing okay let's launch this yeah Bill's on vacation <laughs> so it's up to Bob. Uh, is Bob really the only person? Uh, Bob is the only person I have available to do this. I am so sorry, Bob. I really need to get more Kerbals. <laughs> so I gotta get ready really quickly to stage, start the script, come out. And then engage hover mode. So just get ready. Gonna stage twice. Boom, boom. One for the booster. One, two. Here. Come on, gimme. Enter. Here, nine. Alright. We are in control. Five, actually. We're in control. Wait, we're accelerating up. Why is it full throttle? Okay, forget, forget this. No, no, no. We're gonna kill throttle. Kill throttle. There we go. Abort the program. I do not understand. Wow. This is not getting the throttle particularly quickly. I'm just going to bring her down. Just coming down. That whole problem of it accelerating upwards reared its head again. Oh, and a better vessel wouldn't hurt either. More thrust the weight would be good. I don't care where you come down, Bob, just come down soft. Come on. Okay. Up, stop it. Cut. Okay, why is this not working? 
Man, Kerbin Lander. All right, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. There's something wacky happening here. There's something very wacky. I don't, why is, okay, I'm giving me, I'm giving me this because it doesn't even say what the constraints were anymore. It's saying, because before it used to say go up to 500 meters, it doesn't say that anymore. I definitely landed or splashed down on Kerbin. I don't like that this vessel is here three times. Was I supposed to call it Kerbin? I don't know. Don't care. New to be determined. I don't know. No, no. I'm going to get so alt F12 <laughs> contracts active. Something's wrong with that one. Uh, where is it here? Man Kerbin landing complete. I'm giving that to me. I don't care what you say. There, done. As far as I'm concerned, that is a success. All right, uh, I think I'm giving up on this detail, so we're not gonna, we are not going to recover it back into the, uh, <laughs> into the, uh, either the space plane hangar or the vehicle assembly building. Uh, we are just going to get rid of it and never, ever speak of it again. But in the meantime, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is probably a good place in which to end this episode. So I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.